Hey there everyone, Joe here once again on this beautiful but a little bit chilly Saturday morning to stream some Police Quest 1 in research for the um, upcoming episode number 42 where I will be covering the Police Quest series. So as always, I'm going to start, I'm going to begin at the beginning and, uh, and do the first game. I believe this one came out in 1987. I think we'll find out in just a moment. I've already got it up on the screen here. And, um, yeah, I guess we should just, uh, get into things. Prepare for some wonderful, beautiful, non-high-res, non, uh, non-midi PC speaker bleeping. Okay, so we're not going to use a joystick, because I don't really care to. And, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, so we will hit escape. Ba -ba -ba. Welcome to Police Quest. Created or designed by Jim Walls. So this is the original one, In Pursuit of the Death Angel. Yep, that was right, 1987 by Sierra Online. Created by former police officer Jim Walls, which I'm sure we'll get into. Not sure who Greg Rowland is. Programming by Al Lowe of Leisure Suit Larry fame. Scott Murphy of Space Quest fame. Ken Williams of Owning Sierra fame. Mark Crow, also of Space Quest fame. The team was small at this time, so, you know, a lot of people worked on a lot of projects. Margaret Lowe, who I believe is Allo's wife, may still be Allo's wife. Other people. Miscellaneous. I'm sure former Sierra folks and people that know a lot more off the top of their head about Sierra. Definitely know who all these people are. I only know some of them. Okay, this looks like it's gonna loop, so let's begin the game. Here we are in the Lytton Police Station. Wonderful, so let's uh, let's look room. Around the hallway is a keyboard, a table holding radio extenders, a photograph on the far wall, and a barred window to the evidence room. Okay, so let's go. Keys. This keyboard holds the keys to the squad cars that are presently operable. That's good to know. Take key. Take the keys from the keyboard. That's interesting how it's called a keyboard. Uh, and let's take... Probably need a radio. You can tell those are radios, right? First, let's look radio, because I like looking at everything in Sierra games, because sometimes you get little surprises. The table holds handheld radio extenders that work in conjunction with your police car radio when you're not near your patrol car. That's interesting. I wonder if that's still the... Well, I don't know. They probably use better stuff these days. But yeah, I guess the little handheld radios wouldn't have a ton of range on them. Take radio. You pick up a squelchy, noisy, but workable extender. Okay, let's... Go to the blue room, which I think is the locker room. <laughs> the Lytton PD locker room has two rows of full-size double-stacked lockers with a bench between them, two showers, and three toilet stalls. That's good to know. Oh, look at that dude in the shower. He's real blonde. Can you believe that Morris Fudley, every day he showers here because he's too cheap to shower at home. We don't want to pay for all that hot water. What's this dude have to say? Say, Sonny, do you know... Oh, Sonny, right, I'm Sonny Bonds. He's not an old man calling me Sonny, that's my name. Say, Sonny, do you know how to tell the difference between an oral and a rectal thermometer? By the taste. Well, see you later. I'm late for a date to raise my caffeine level. Right, going to get coffee. That was a bad joke. Boy, what a hangover I have. I should have left the blue room earlier last night. Well, that's a clue that that may be a place that we're probably going to go to. Can I talk to Fudley, even though he's naked, which is kind of creepy? Do you know the best thing about this shower, Sonny? It's free. Too bad I have to work, Sonny. Says Fudley, I'm 1010. It's beer time for me. Or too bad I have to work. 1010 means done for the day or something like that. You'd better get on your beat before Sergeant Dooley catches you blowing off department time. Okay. And there's a guy taking a dump in the bottom corner. I think the first one is my locker. 
look locker of these all metal double stack lockers one of these finding it is up to you open the locker oh i'm awesome look locker i do remember things from 1987. you store your personal gear in your locker you see your weapon in your gun belt there is a speed loader of ammunition on the shelf your briefcase rests on the bottom of the locker the keys to your corvette are hanging on a hook a corvette i'm pretty awesome your towel is neatly folded in the bottom of the locker. Mm -mm -mm. Your civilian clothes are hanging on a hanger. An old t-shirt and a pair of jeans hang here. Okay. Uh, look, gun. You see your weapon in your other. Okay. Take gun. The policeman's tool belt. Don't leave home without it. Take ammo. Mo. You take a speed lo lo loader. Speed loader with six rounds of 357 Magnum hollow point silver jacketed bullets. Take brief. I before E except after C. See, these games do show you how to spell. I still have that problem. Your briefcase contains many items you will need in the field. I think that is probably all of it. Uh, oop, that's not what I wanted. Special, where's inventory? Inventory. Ooh. Okay. Ba 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 ba. Can I? Nope. D. What happened? Hello. Okay. Let's not do that ever again. That was awful. I think this happens. Yes, this is a DOS box thing. Cause this happened to me in Space Quest too. Don't use the inventory screen. Okay. Um. 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 um, um. Open briefcase. I E. Look. Brief case. Pen, notebook, and ticket book. Take pen. High school graduation gift. Take notebook. Take ticket book. Is that all? Looks like everything. Okay, close. I.E. case. I got 11 points. Close locker. Blah. Oh, there's the janitor. Now we're going to save game. I will save it in slash. I will call it locker. Okay. Now I guess I gotta go to Say, fool, back out of here just to shade. You getting close enough to dance with, and Lord knows only I did enough dancing last night. Sure. Well, that was a uh, stereotypical black man. <laughs> I know I can put up the speed, but I don't feel like it. We're going to make this video long. <laughs> Don't think this is where I needed to go. <coughs> Where's the briefing room? Oh, it's one. Okay, I'm not that mean. Let's go fast. There we go, that's a bit better. Briefing at 1300. Oh no, you're in for, you're for the 1300 briefing at 1315. Once again, you spend too much time goofing off. Thanks for playing Police Quest! Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Okay, well. Let's see. Did I save it too late? Fast. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna do stuff to me. Okay, I guess I'm going to start over. <laughs> okay, three. Okay, we'll do that all quickly now. Okay, so let's go back to fast. Take key. Take radio. Mm-mm-mm. Blah, blah, blah. 
at too cheap. Okay, don't need to talk to them. Open locker. I think there's an actual timer here. Take gun. Take briefcase. We can get the stuff out of the briefcase later. Take ammo. Close locker. Let's see what these dudes have to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, come on now. Well, it didn't die. Dope in the city. President Hickle. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of backstory. Bonds and Walters. Walters for the LPD Officer of the Year Award. Uh, close paper, does that work? Yeah. Sunday Bonds, please find your place. The briefing is about to begin. Well, that's good to know. Okay, which one's my place? Is it this one? I guess we'll find out in a second. Sonny, find your desk. Is it this one? Nope. I will assume it's this one then. Good to know. Sergeant John Dooley briefs the 1300 shift, beginning with the latest hot sheet of stolen rides. Welcome back, men, says Sergeant John Dooley. I hope you enjoyed the long weekend. Now, listen up. We are looking for... Let me write this stuff down, because that's what you do in these games. Oh, here's a piece of paper. I have nowhere to put it because there's too many computers around me. Okay, now listen up. We're looking for 83 Cadillac. License number LOP1238. VIN C0345. Six. <laughs> 218. Reported stolen last week. Try hard to find it so I can get that Malcolm Washington character off my back for a change. Now hear this. Last night, three teenagers were arrested in three separate arrests. Uh, each for drunk driving. Two of the three were in possession of cocaine, and all three attended Jefferson High School. That should tell you something, boys and girls. Well, that's it for today. Watch your butts, kids. We don't want old Chief Whipplestick whining about our industrial injury stats Going up again, Sunny Bonds, your call number will be 8332. 8332 number. Actually, let me pull up the map on the iPad here. Where's iBooks? iBooks, iBooks, iBooks. There we are. You can get the map off the GOG. Okay, now let's save our game since... Things are going relatively. Briefing. Okay. Open brief case. Take pen. Take book. Ah. <laughs> Take notebook. Take ticket. Book. Close brief case. Opening in narcotics. Well, that's good to know. That's handy to know. La la la. Okay, map is up. Mm -mm -mm. Look, room. The briefing room contains a single podium. Single podium, sorry, my phone vibrated. And four report writing tables on the far wall are eight pigeonholes. On the front wall there is a blackboard. Man, they try to make you to use words that are hard to spell. P 
pigeon hole. Nope. Look. Pigeon <laughs> hole. What's a pigeon hole? Look. Hole. Well, Sonny, an empty pigeon hole is better than one full of subpoenas. Jack's pigeon holds several birthday cards. Okay. It looks like Steve finally cleaned out his box. That sounds gross. Your message box, often called a pigeon hole, is empty. Good to know. Leave the briefing room. Let's leave the briefing room. Sure clears out quick around here. Uh, so I have my radio, right? Yeah, I have my radio, I have my keys. Don't need the computer room. Where are we now? There's a table against the far wall below a photograph. The three doorways lead to Lieutenant Morgan's office. Oh, it's like Dexter. <laughs> to the outside, or maybe Dexter is like Police Quest. And to the narcotics office. Well, we don't need to do that now. <laughs> okay. Parking lot holds three patrol cars, an unmarked car, and a shiny clean Corvette, which is apparently mine, though I guess I'm the only guy that drives to work. Bum, bum, bum. Look, cars. Your mark control car features a powerful V8 engine choked down with the very latest in smog devices and purchased from the lowest bidder. It is capable of attaining speeds of up to 87 or more miles per hour. Okay, so if I remember right, this one's my car and I have to do a walk around, otherwise I die. And I think it does actually, I read the manual last night. Having performed the prescribed walk around safety check of your vehicle, you're ready to hit the streets. Open door. Get in car. <laughs> I really shouldn't say everything. This seems like an opportune moment to save my game. Because this is a Sierra game, and I'm going to die many, many times, in fact. If you already missed it, I died once. <laughs> uh, closed door. Start car. Broom. Okay. Ooh. Let's lower the speed. Normal. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Red light. Come on. There we go. That's how you get through lights. F8, normal mode, sorry. F8, normal mode. Whoa. Ah, nice job. <laughs> okay, restore. That's why I say before I got in the car. Close door. Drive, is that easier? Okay. Back to still normal speed. I think now I'm just supposed to drive around until something happens. Left turn, this side. Bum 
There's no stop signs in this town, it seems. Controlling the streets. The mean streets of Lytton. Oh, yeah. So this is what you call a time sink, I would think. You know, this is like gathering and wow. This is the, the primordial version of gathering and wow, patrolling the streets in police quest, waiting for a message to occur. Got all of these Sierra timer. See, this is like the opposite of the regular Sierra timer problem, like in Space Quest. So that's the highway entrance. I'm not going to get on the highway. That just seems like a recipe for disaster. Bum, 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 bum. There should be some music here. I know this is like early days, so they don't have a ton of music. Ooh, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> We do drive on 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 the same side as as Americans do here in Canada. Eighty three thirty two. Oh, that's me. Respond to eleven eighty three southwest corner of Fig and Fourth. Okay, so if I take the map here, I am now in C four. So where's Fig? Fig, Fig, Fig. Fig is the third street from the top, and Fourth is, of course, surprisingly, the fourth street. Okay, let's save the game. We'll call it Fig and Fourth. Now, how in God's name do you get across? Oh, okay, I see. Oh. <laughs> Restore. Figure four. <laughs> okay, I guess I gotta do one of these here. You must be stopping. Fourth, I guess we'll go to slow. We'll turn on my stuff. Now I can actually control the freaking thing. quadrants on this map that they give you okay so fourth street is there i think yeah so the one i'm about to turn on is fourth and fig is hopefully the one i want Head to map B2. Sorry, I do I do have a walkthrough. <laughs> a few times. That's that's how you learn in Sierra games. Okay, here, let's see if I can... Ugh, 
Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be edited in post, I think. Okay. Slow. Like I said, total time sync. There we go. There we go. That's the police station. Whoa. C2. Oh, that was a close one. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> At least I'm having fun. Okay. Save the game, because this is freaking hard. All right, fig and forth. Enter. Ugh. Remember, people, just because... There we go. Upon your arrival at the scene of the accident, you observe a group of bystanders gawking at a green sedan that attempted to carve its own door in the side of a brick building. Being a highly trained observer, you immediately notice a smashed coupe on the sidewalk and a crowd of rubberneckers. Rubberneckers? Rubberneckers? There. Milling around nearby, the crowd includes one particularly anxious young man. Get out of car. Save. Taxi vent. Ooh, there's a dude in the car. That's no good. Look, car. There's a man slumped over in the steering wheel. Help, man. You're not close enough. Three. If you, you take a deep breath, look in the car, and see a male slumped motionless over the steering wheel. Ba -ba 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 -bum. A closer look reveals a bloody injury to the left side of his head and a gaping hole in his lower right jaw. He, he's been shot! Use radio. You have nothing to report. Investigate the accident scene. Talk to man. Even though he's probably dead. This guy won't be saying or doing anything soon. There's a bullet hole in the driver's window. This is not your normal everyday traffic accident. Your opinion is that this man was murdered! Now I should be able to use my radio. You use your radio to advise dispatch of the apparent homicide. The car radio crackles a response. 10 4 32 we copy 187 PC homicide. Something. Mm -mm -mm. Be advised, one homicide unit is en route and the coroner's office has been notified. Continue investigation. Okay, let's go talk to the rubberneckers. Rubberneckers. Look, crowd. The crowd appears to be fixated on the wreck. Talk, crowd. An excited young man approaches you. Officer, he says. I saw what happened. I saw everything. 
I was buying a paper at the newsstand across the street when I heard the scream of tires, he tells you. I look down the street and here comes this car and a light blue late model Cadillac. Oh. Racing down the street side by side. Well, I have a Cadillac on watch. When they got closer, I heard a bang and thought one of them had a blowout. But right after that, this car here lost control and crashed. The light blue caddy just kept on jamming, he finishes breathlessly. Hmm. Let's see if we can find out more. All I know, says the witness, I think I saw part of his license plate number, L964. Well, that's not the same license plate number as the one that I have. LP number L964. Hmm. Well, let's use radio again until you verify the dispatch of the vehicle information. 10 4 32 We copy 187 PC homicide. Continue investigation. You notify dispatch of the vehicle information. You notify dispatch of the vehicle information. <laughs> well, that was repetitive. Dispatch, this is 8332. Be advised, description of suspect vehicle is late model, light blue Cadillac. 10 8332 We copy light blue Cadillac, partial license, L964. Now apparently, the sign reads Colonial Van and Storage. Oh, let's get out the way. We got some, our buddies showing up. Homicide Detective Oscar Hamilton arrives with Sergeant Dooley. Dooley tells you, Bonds, Detective Hamilton will handle the investigation from here. Hit the streets and try to find the rat responsible, says Sergeant Dooley. I'll introduce the witness to Hamilton. Okay. Back in the car, then. Back onto the dangerous, dangerous streets. I also have a suspicion. Let's just do something here. Save. Back to the streets. I, my suspicion. Oh, I can't. I was sure that if I walked onto the street, I'd get hit, mowed down by a car, but I think that's a leisure suit by everything. Get in. Close door. Start car. Ah. No emergencies. Yeah, this is like a total time suck. It's just like you drive around until something happens and you have plenty of opportunity to die. I mean, it's pretty ingenious if you think about it. Why is sound off? Oh, I hit F2 by mistake. Sound on, doesn't matter. No sound here anyway. See, there should totally be some doo 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 kind of like late 80s driving music. Be pretty awesome. Oh, you're right, Paul. <laughs> I should do up seat belt. So maybe that one isn't required in, in this one. Though I do feel like it, it's just like a total Sierra trope. It's like, oh, that's, that's Space Quest when you're leaving in Space Quest 1. When you're egg when you're escaping from the ship, if you don't do up your harness, you splatter all over the place. I should like stream some some tunes. Steve Radios, eighty three thirty two. This is eighty three thirty one. Time for eleven ninety eight at Caffeine Castle. There is actually they they explain all the stupid codes. In uh, in the manual, I can't remember. I think eleven ninety eight is. I don't know. Apparently, eleven ninety eight is uh, <laughs> coffee. So, caffeine carols, according to this walkthrough, because I'm lay too lazy to look for it, is on A three. So I'm at D three. I'm gonna save my game so I don't die a horrible death in my car once again. Go to. Caffeine carols. I 
And I know if I was smarter, I'd hit F5 so I wouldn't have to do the whole menu thing, but blah. D3. C3. Let's see what's going to happen. Are we going to... The car's moving left. Oh, I wonder because my screen is technically stretched, right? Because I'm, I'm on a widescreen monitor and this is a 4x3 game, 640x400. I wonder because you see the cars going left and right are seem to be moving a lot faster than the cars moving up and down. I wonder if that's because the resolution is stretched. But it might also just be a visual thing. Okay. Escape. Save. Go to Caffeine Carols. Okay. Exit. <sighs> At least you don't have to park like right next to the, uh, right next to the thing. What's it called? The curb. You have to do like a proper pal parallel park with that interface, it would be awful. Okay. Mm, open door. Exit. Close door. Because, you know, we're not animals. We don't leave our car doors open. Bum, 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 bum. Carol's Caffeine Castle, CCC. The triple C. Oh, it opened automatically. That's handy. I guess I gotta go and sit with what's-his-face. Let's look for him first. This is your favorite coffee shop. Carol, the busy but friendly waitress, makes the strongest coffee in town. There is a menu to the left on the left wall and a telephone on the far wall. The restroom is down the hall from the phone. A pay phone? What the hell is that? You know, I saw one, I think, the other day. They're getting more and more rare. All right, let's go hang out with Steve. Hey, Steve. Look, table. You see nothing special. Okay. Sitter is nothing. Sitter is, is my new Web 2.0 application. <clears throat> Talk to Steve. Boy, this weather's been great. That's pretty worthless. And then wait for Carol to talk to Steve. Hey, Sonny, it's good to see you. Talk to Steve. Oh, okay. <laughs> look, menu. You look over Carol's blue plate specials du jour. Filet of hummingbird breast. Pigsty stew. Fried pork rind. Yum. Oh, I couldn't... I'm not sure if those... Ah, there we go. Carol sets your coffee down and says, Here you go, big boy. One caffeine IV. There's my coffee. Talk. Carol... Aw. She can't hear you from here. The grill must be loud. Drink coffee. You slam back the entire mug of Jamaican Java. Your eyeballs roll back in your head. Telephone. Telephone. Am I supposed to answer the phone? It's not my restaurant. Oh, there goes Carol. Stop ringing. What's going on? Carol yells at you from across the room. Officer Bonds, there's a Detective Hamilton on the phone for you. Oh, yes, I remember this. Before people had cell phones... You had to call places where you think they might be to get in touch with them. I do remember those days. <laughs> okay, I guess I will uh, stand. Use phone. I also remember I, you can call, you used to be able to call pay phones too. You take the phone in here. Bonds, this is Detective Hamilton. We identified the 187 victim in the car as Lonnie West, a local small time drug dealer. Believe it or not, he's the second small timer to get his ticket punched in the last two weeks. Well, that's interesting. I just wanted you to know about West since you worked the scene, got a run, got another call waiting. Don't spend the whole day drinking coffee. Bye. Click. Okay, let's go back and sit down and see what Steve has to make of all this. Okay. Yes, <laughs> Steve doesn't. Steve is pretty worthless. 
stand. All right, let's get out of here. Stuff to do. This one's my car. That's Steve's car. I'm still nervous about walking in the street. <laughs> Open door. Sit. Close door. Save. Patrol. Drive. And now we drive around and wait for something else to happen. The pinnacle of game design right here. Let's go this away. Oops, that was the right turn, I think. Yes. It's weird when you're driving. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Paul. <laughs> a wild case does appear. Oh, that was that would have been a close one. That's what happens when I look over at my Mac to see the chat. <laughs> Because I'm not sure. Technically, I guess this isn't considered a ran random encounters. This is timer encounters, which is worse than random encounters. Because at least random encounters happen every once in a while. You cruise your beat, just aching to write that ticket. Write a ticket. Now I guess I gotta go somewhere where someone's gonna do something. Oh. Oh, that red car! Red car! Did you see that red sports car run that red light? I sure did. Save game! <laughs> uh, stop car. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> it's so difficult. Okay. Almost there. I almost got it. Okay, let's give him a little bit of space. Okay, you gotta stop. There we go. You activate your red emergency lights and observe the sports car. Pull to the curb and stop. Oh, that is a cute little sports car, ain't it? Nope, not restore. Save. Let's do that same one. Do, do, do. Open door. Exit. I'll just be very nonchalant walking over here. Swagger a little. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Look, car. Well, well, just what every poor little rich girl needs. A little red sports car. Look, girl. Oh, hello. As you look into the car, you wonder, can this be happening? The young lady has a smile that could melt the polar ice caps. Beautiful flashing eyes, gorgeous hair, and her unbuttoned blouse makes it obvious she has nothing to hide. Say hello. My name is Helen, Helen Hotz. Oh, come on, <laughs> she says as heat detectors go off for miles around. What's your name? What's yours, handsome? Sunny Bonds. Good day, ma'am. 
trying to keep your glance high. I'm Officer Sonny Bonds. I'm truly sorry, sir. I honestly do not even see that red light. Is there anything that I can do to convince you to let me off? And I do mean anything. You ran a red light. You ran a red light back there, miss. Yes, she already told me that. And a soft, selective voice. Why, officer, I'm just sure I didn't do anything wrong. I'm truly sorry, sir. Is there anything I can do to convince you that to let me off? And I do mean anything. Oh, so I can be a bad cop here. I suspect the game will get mad at me if I do. So I will say no, because I'm a good cop. Being the veteran that you are, you overcome temptation and stare the young lady straight in the eyes. May I please see your driver's license, man? Helen Hotz, 5'2", 105 pounds. Black hair, blue eyes, born in 66. She lives in Lytton, no restrictions. All right, ticket. You carefully fill in all the necessary information on the citation. She's hopping mad. She yells, oh, you cops are all alike. All you care about is making your quotas. Well, come on, snap it up. I'm in a hurry, Mr. Big Shot Traffic Cop. Guys like you make me want to do a big dip of snuff. I think that means coke. You never give a decent girl a break. You just hassle people. Okay. Return license. And apparently we have to ask her to sign the ticket. You hand her the ticket book and your pen. Please sign at the X, man. She hands you your ticket book back and suggests with a sarcastic smile, why don't you shove that pen where the sun don't shine, officer? Mommy and daddy, really. Give ticket. She verbally pounds you again. Officer, did your mother have any children that lived? Oh, she's mean. She is the mean. She replies in a heated voice. Just remember, fish breath, I'm going to file a complaint on you. I'll cheat, lie, and do anything possible to get your little fuzz buds butt in trouble. You hear me? Sure. Oh, right, I got to use radio. Dispatch, this is 8332. Run once on ocean. Henry, Mary, Yellow, Mary, George. Dispatch returns with the information you requested. Oh, my MG is currently registered to Helen Hotz. No once. Okay, good to know. Get in car. Close door. Drive. And... A five. Save game. Yeah! Hot key for the win. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. I'll uh, maybe I'll do an alternate where I where I do flirt with her. I know it's fun trying to try to kind of trying to go and do all the extra stuff, but I got four games to get through, so I'm gonna burn through these. But yeah, CR games are rife with that stuff, which is which is pretty awesome. Streets, yet again. Okay. Drive around until something else happens. Enraged, the young woman shrieks as you drive off. Your mama wears army boots, you bleephead. I think she meant to say shithead. <laughs> driving, driving on the blocky street. I'd make it go faster, but then I'll crash, and I'll just have to do it all over again. Okay, C3 is where the police station is. i got to remember that. And I guess I'm a local cop, so I don't even know if I have uh, jurisdiction on the highway. At least here in Canada... The provincial police, or the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, where in provinces where there are no provincial police, have 
jurisdiction on the highways and the local police have jurisdiction on the city streets. I think that's the way it works in the States too, except there's maybe a couple more levels of police service, but uh, we're very simple over here. I guess Lytton has a beach. I believe Lytton... Is it supposed to be in California? I'll just assume that it is in California. There's a lot of pools and stuff, so... That sounds reasonable. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
As he heads for the back room, the bartender mumbles under his breath, Here comes trouble. The leader of this bunch comes over to you and says, Well, well, if it ain't the tidy bowl man. I guess. What the brap do you want, pig? Please move your bikes. Your bikes. How do you plan to make us move our bikes, wimp? Say goodnight, pig. We're gonna kick the shit out of you. Out. Night stick. Of course I need it. What the? I did that. It appears you just wanted, you're just what these lowlifes wanted. A cop to pound on. Okay, that's interesting. Let's try that again. Look, nightstick, let's make sure I have it. The PR-24 Nightstick is a self-defense tool. It develops high levels of kinetic energy via centrifugal force. Okay. Please move bikes. There we go. You remove your PR-24 and take a defensive stance. The head biker quickly backs down saying, excuse us, sir, if you're going to be rough with us, we'll just leave quietly. Listen, these aren't very tough bikers. Come on, guys, let's blow this joint. Yeah, you better. That guy's bald. <laughs> and that guy's got his easy top beard. The local working girl, actually that ZZ Top beard guy looks like, well, ZZ Top from the Space Quest bar. Anyways, the local working girl seated at the bar seems to know you. She hops from the stool and shouts, Sonny Bond, is that you? My hero. Boy, am I glad you had showed up. Those guys had some pretty strange ideas. Girl. What's cooking, good looking? Asks your old friend, Sweet Cheeks Marie. It's been too long, Sonny. I haven't seen you around lately. I just know you want something. Hmm. She seems like she could be an underground informant. <laughs> yeah, Gareth. Nightstick 1 on the second try. First time around, it was Bikers 1. Nightstick 0. Ask about drugs. Obviously, you have come to the right place. Sweet Cheeks Marie spills her guts to you. You know what I heard the other day? Says Marie, there's a big dope man trying to take over Lytton. He likes to call himself the Death Angel. I don't know no more about him, but this John was sure a peculiar duck. I only seen him once, and I'm not sure about his name. I think it was Kaufman or Hoffman or something like that. He's a real spiffy dresser, but the funniest thing, the guy has a sweet little flower tattoo above his left nipple. It was kind of cute, really. That's the only real news in town, sweet thing. In return for the information on the Death Angel, you tell Sweet Cheeks of the upcoming undercover crackdown on prostitution ring called Operation Trick Trap. Oh, that's good of him. I think that's all I gotta do here. Oh, wait. Let's get Bye, Sweet Cheeks. So long, sweetie. Sweet Cheeks Marie says, come see me sometime when you can spend more time, darling. I do like, I, I do enjoy the prostitutes. Still scared about walking in the street. Open door. Yeah, in. Close door. Let's see if fasten seatbelt works. Yeah, okay, so that does work. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I'll do that from now on. Uh, drive. Streets, heart, trace. At least, well, maybe it's more than that, but whatever. And yet again, we drive around until things occur. 
Oops, there I am. I got disorientated because I looked away for just a moment. Left turn. Maybe. Yeah, that's a left turn. It's all backwards when you're going down. Right turn. Traffic light. Boop. Boop. Yeah, Gareth, that's what I said before. I kind of like, I'm afraid to walk in the street because of Leisure Suit Larry. I just assume that all CR games will try and kill you anytime they possibly can. Hey, that guy went through a light. You observe an erratically driven vehicle and feel the driver may have had one too many. Oh, come on. And I didn't even save the game that time, did I? Oh, Lord. Okay, let's go through all of that again. I didn't save my game because I wasn't expecting that to happen. <laughs> I was waiting for like a message. They changed it up that time. Ooh, that was a close one. Save. That way. Let's run down the timer a little bit. Where am I? Under the highway? I guess we'll find out in a second. There I be. Let's see if it's that brown car. Nope. You observe an erratically driven vehicle and feel the driver may have had one too many. Let's see, who is it? Oh, it's that, it's Pink, it's Pinky. Hey there, Pinky. Save. Drunk. This is hard. <laughs> Restore. Drunk. Let's leave some space. Where'd he go? He went away. Again. Oops, not that one. Nope, not that one. There we go. He slowly pulls to the right, jumps the curb, and comes to a stop. Exit. Save. Drunk. Open door. Oops. Open. Door. Store. Exit. You cautiously approach the vehicle and observe one male seated behind the wheel, rolling down his window. Appears to be quite a challenge to him. Good. Let's see, drunkie. Look, man. You look into the glassy, watery eyes of a middle-aged man. He is certainly feeling no pain. Talk to man. 
You hear the voice that sounds like Tiny Tim singing through a mouthful of crackers. I didn't do nothing wrong, Oshifer. Oh yeah, this guy's derunk. Show driver's license. The man fumbles with his wallet. My license? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, right here it is. <laughs> it's Al Lowe. <laughs> it's actually a picture of Al Lowe. So his name's Art Sarabian. 5'8", 199 pounds. No hair. Well, he has hair. It's just on top of his head. Blah, blah, blah. Restrictions? Programmer. <laughs> that is comical. Bum, bum, bum. Since the information on the driver's license matches the subject, return his license to him. Get out of the car. Gentleman responds, Diasher. Okay. Uh, all right, this is another outdated thing. Give sobriety test. See, now we would just breathalyze him. You have correctly administered the field sobriety test and are amused as your subject gives his best imitation of a young swan attempting for his first takeoff. Come on, show me. Uh, no, I guess they're not going to do a little animation. Cuff man. The drunk begs you. Could you cuff me in the front, please? I'm not feeling so good. No, not allowed. Only ladies get cuffed in the front. Not that that is really fair anyway, either. Not wanting to take a chance to explain. I'm sorry, sir, but department policy dictates all custody arrests shall be restrained by proper handcuffing procedure, and that means behind your back. You place the subject under arrest for the violation of Litton City Vehicle Code VC23502, driving while under the influence. Search man. You pat down the gentleman and find no weapons. That's part of the procedure. It's in the manual. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Come with me if you want to live. Reluctantly, he says, uh, okay, where are we going? So as not to excite him, you say, oh, we're just going to take a little ride to see if some friends of yours. It's okay, buddy. Come on. Radio dispatch. Run check on personalized license plate programmer one. It appears to be currently registered. Dispatch returns with programmer one is clear with valid local registration in the name of Arts Arabian. Record check shows two prior DUI convictions. Let's do that again. Okay, that's fine. Radio tow truck. Truck. You key the radio dispatch. This is 8332. Request 1, 1185 in my 1020. Too many codes! So convoluted. Just say it. Anyways. Eighty-three thirty-two ten four one tow truck on route. Open door. Get in. Close door. Fasten seatbelt because we like safety. Right, because this is the 80s, right? So you didn't have to fasten your seatbelt. So that's why they don't require it. Drive. I guess we gotta bring this bring this guy back to the station. Or at least to the jail. Save. Go to jail. Which is on D3, is that it? Yeah, D3. D2? Oh, just up one. Don't worry, it'll be towed somewhere safe at your expense. Ah ha ha! C2.
B2, B2, no, I'm going the wrong way. I want D3. <laughs> yeah, Gareth. Luckily, I'm trying to remember if there's money in this game. Every other Sierra game has some stupid gambling thing in it. D3. I'll assume that thing that looks like... No, that other thing probably is City Hall. So I'll assume the thing across the street from City Hall is the jail. I probably don't need to stop at this light, but... Again, Sierra. They'll punish me in some manner. Should probably save the game. Go to jail! Yellow light, red light. Okay. Exit. It's the shitty jail. Save. Call it like one. That way I'll know which one's the latest. I used to do that. That's how I used to do my things. When you start rolling over. Okay, open door. Exit. Close door. Open door. Since your suspect can't go through you, you might consider moving out of the way. I am out of the way! See if you can walk up those stairs without falling down. You order the drunk. Close door. Hick, what you mean, Oshifer? He replies. I walk like dish even when I'm sober. Gotta put my gun in the gun locker. Watch your step, Art. We don't want you falling down the stairs. Hick, says Art. Open locker. Put gun in locker. Place your revolver in the locker. Close locker. Take key. How can you do that? Okay, I guess it locks by itself. Let's go push the button. Push button. You push the buzzer, the jailer releases the electronic lock. Follow me, you order your prisoner. There's Fat Albert in there. The jailer greets you with a friendly, oh no, here comes more paperwork. The jailer says, what can I do for you, hot pencil? Hot pencil, what the hell? Bum, bum, bum. Book him. What are you charging him with? I should have written that down, shouldn't I? Are you going to book this dude or not? Drunk driving. You remove an inventory of the prisoner's personal property, then hand it over to the jailer with the booking slip. The jailer takes the prisoner's property, then says, Okay, Monty, remove this gentleman's cuff and place him behind door number one. Are you going to remove his cuffs or not? Remove cuffs. You remove the cuffs and place them in your handcuff case. Oh, I can't move around in here. Woo boy, that feels good, says the drunk. Those cuffs were so tight I thought my hands had fallen off. They had not. In we go. If he throws up on the floor, you're gonna clean it up, Bonds.
Gee, thanks a lot, Ashifer. The drunk. I'm so happy I could just... Shit? <laughs> okay. All done. Uh-huh. Laura enters the jail and says, Hey, Sonny, I need to speak with you for a moment. Okay. A position has opened up in the narcotics division, and according to Lieutenant Morgan... <laughs> that's still funny... It will be filled by a vet veteran street cop. If you're interested, submit a memo to Lieutenant Morgan as soon as possible. It would be a great chance for you to get out of that uniform for a while. Hmm. Just as Laura leaves, the jailer yells at you. Hey, hot pencil, come over here. Uh-huh. I just hung up from talking to Dooley, and he is, and is he hot? The jailer continues. He wants you back at the office on the double. And you all just saw my dad log into Skype there. <laughs> Have to turn that off for next time. Open locker. Take gun. Close locker. And again, Sierra game, so afraid to fall down the stairs and die. Open door, sit, close door, drive, right? Da -da -da, got my gun. Do all these things, maybe these, no, it doesn't get me points. Okay, drive, not dive. Save game to back to station. Which is on C3. one screen over, I believe. Look at me obeying traffic law. I'm awesome. D2. Oops. Letters go up and down. Numbers go left and right. Now I get it. C2. Ugh. C3, there we are. Okay, exit. Anything fancy I have to do here? Nope. Open door. Exit. Close door. apply for that job. This looks like the proper place to fill out a memo. Table, table, table. On the table there is a basket marked in. This is where you submit your reports and memos. Next to the basket is a pad of blank memos. Write memo. You write out a request for transfer to the quote-unquote narcotics division. Put memo, memo, in basket. You place your request into the in basket. I have applied for a job. Woot. If that gremlin keeps messing with me, says Sergeant Dooley, I'm going to notify Internal Affairs to start an investigation. 
When I find out who the little weasel is, says Sergeant Dooley, you'd better believe that he or she will be walking from a footbeat will be walking a footbeat from the river all the way to Joe's junkyard, which I assume are on opposite sides of town. What up? Park Sergeant. Dooley ain't fit to talk right now. Hey, Sonny, Dooley says he's going to start a big internal affairs investigation just because some fool put a stinking smelly bird on his desk. <laughs> You're right, Gareth, about the seatbelt thing. Take a look at my office, Sonny. Maybe you can shed some light as to how that creature made his way to the top of my desk. Let's see. Open door. Astro chicken music! You can hardly believe your eyes. A full-grown chicken with its legs tied together is flapping about and clucking raucously right on Sergeant Dooley's desk. Ooh, PETA might have a problem with this. Uh, feathers fly everywhere, but that's not the worst. Unfortunately, the chicken has lost control of her bodily functions. The mysterious gremlin has struck Sergeant Dooley again. You think to yourself, this is one excited chicken, as you watch the flop, watch it flop, squirt, and cluck around on Dooley's desk. You bite your lip and try to keep from laughing. Funny if I find out who you are, that inconsiderate worthless gremlin, I'll hang you out to dry. Okay. I swear if I catch that gremlin, whoever he is, I'm gonna make hamburger out of him. All right, Dooley, I get it. I ain't touching this with a 10-foot pole. All right. Hey, Sonny, you're off duty, aren't you? Some of us are going to the Blue Room. It's not like the Blue Oyster or whatever from Police Academy, where, you know, the gay bar. To throw Jack a little surprise party after you change clothes, why don't you stop by? The dancer we hired for Jack's party is something else. Ooh, there's strippers in this. Adult game. You gonna give me a lip? Yep. Sure would be nice if the city fixed some of these vents in here. Smells like one big cattle yard after every shift change. Again, generic black guy. You go, 1987. Open locker. <laughs> Change clothes. Regulations require a shower before changing. Close locker. Turn on shower. Morris Fudley has worn out this shower. Stupid Morris Fudley. Ah, there's nothing like a nice hot shower. Wash. Wash self. Okay. Turn off shower. I will assume that I am now clean. And locker. Change clothes. Let's get in my vet. Take key. You grab the keys to your vet. Close locker. Come on, man, give me some room before I mop a shine under those big feet of yours. That guy, really? Crotchety. Crotchety he is. All right, let's put back. I don't want to steal car keys, and I don't want to steal radios. 
So we probably need to put them back. Ooh. That's what happens when I stop looking where I'm going. Replace key. Replace radio. You return your radio extender to the recharge stand. Sir. Oh, let's go get my vet. Do I have to do a walk around of my vet? Let's do one just in case. It's a Stingray. It's a nice little Corvette. Stingray in 16 colors. Anyways, good enough. Open door. I gotta go way to the back. Get in. Close door. Door even. Drive. Me and my vet. Okay, save game. Where am I going? The blue room. B4. Boom. Three. Blue room. Oh, I can't do like police car stuff now because I'm just a dude. So B is this away. Let's. Oops, nope. <laughs> I'm so bad at directions. No, Gareth, I am not going to crash this time. B3. Let's see, can I have tenant? Oh, I can go faster, but I don't... Oops, I don't know what to do. Too many hotkeys. A3. Ugh. <laughs> Letters are up and down. Letters are up and down. Probably driving on the wrong side of the road, too. Oh! You may only ignore intersection controls when operating patrol car in code 3 status, and even then only using due caution. And because I disobeyed the law, <laughs> game over. Woohoo! <laughs> You're right, Gareth. Thank you, Sierra. <laughs> okay. Blue room. Now I know where to go anyways. I will be very attentive to the traffic laws and all that noise. C4. Oh, that's, I'm good. <laughs> D4. Okay, wrong way. And of course now I have to wait for the stupid light! <laughs> well, this is a very realistic simulation of driving, that's for sure. I bet you some programmer got a huge kick out of doing this whole thing. It's like, I'm going to make it as realistic as possible, except that it makes it incredibly boring to play. Because <laughs> God knows as a programmer, I would make a, I would get a huge kick out of like making this map and making all the cars drive around with behavior like they're real cars and blah, blah, blah. I was probably like, this guy was probably so proud of this. And it just takes so much time to do anything. Okay, I'm going over there. Left turn. Don't change on me, lights. Right turn. It's like a friggin' docking maneuver. Open door.
Exit. Close door. All right, let's go hang out with my boys. You see your friend Jack seated alone at the table. There is a jukebox against the wall to the left. Well, Paul, so Paul's basically saying he's wondering how fun this actually was back in the day. And, you know, I'm using a guide. The only reason I'm using a walkthrough is because I want to get through this so I can, you know, experience hopefully the whole game for the podcast. But, you know, the, the whole fun of these Sierra games was that it took you a long time to kind of get through them. And it could be frustrating and all that, but, you know, you, you, it, it made it all the sweeter when you actually figured stuff out. And, you know, there were hint books and things like that at the time as well, but it was really like you and your friends would kind of sit around and you just beat your heads against it until you kind of figured out the puzzles, figured out how not to die and all that stuff. So, you know, I guess it's just, it, does it hold up? Who knows? I guess we'll figure that out at the end of the podcast when I get through the whole series, but... It's definitely an older type of game. All right, let's sit with Jack here. Jack motions you to the chair to his left. His left, which is this one. Jack speaks. Boy, what a depressing day I've had today, Sonny. Yeah, Paul, save early, save often. Jack speaks in a very depressed voice. Oh, Sonny, I just discovered that my daughter is doing drugs. It's really screwed me up. I know she's getting them at school, but I just can't finger the punk who's supplying. My life is going to crap. Can't sit and talk to my daughter. She won't listen to me anymore. My drinking has my marriage on the rocks. My wife's ready to leave me. Everything's a mess. Hey, Keith, you say, how's it going? Good, Sonny, he replies. Oh, oh my God. Jack is totally surprised as everyone sings happy birthday. Oh, I hope they paid for the rights to this. Copyright. I forgot. Hoochie Coochie Hannah, a dancer from the local rent-a-gag business, enters the room dressed in a grass skirt and balloons. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, no. Now what? It's time to stand up and face the music, Jack. <laughs> oh, that's, uh... Yeah. Interesting. I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> In her most seductive voice, Hoochie Coochie Hannah whispers, Here's a little something so you'll have a happy birthday, Jack, baby. Woo. Is that butt crack? <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> He says, well, Jack, you old codger, what would you think of Hoochie Coochie Hannah? I hate saying that. You know, Keith, I think I'll ask Santa to put her under my tree this year. Sure. Okay. Party over? <laughs> Let's check. The Jack reminds you. Keith pipes up. Oh my gosh, Sonny, did you forget we swapped shifts last week? You're due at the station for a swing shift briefing in 15 minutes. Okay. Save. <laughs> yeah, guys, I think she did have a beatbox somewhere. Music just cut out as soon as she left. Uh, four. Oops, keypad doesn't work. Go to station. Stand. Leave. Nah. Nah. Better get moving, boy. I am moving! This is if I'm late for a briefing, I get fired? This is, like, not fair. 
Open door. Get in. Close door. Drive. Save. Just in case I'm late. Go back one. So I need C3. Which I will assume is down one and over one. Because I'm bad at directions. The balloons will stay there forever, Paul. Forever. <laughs> or my suspicion is when I go back, the balloons will be gone because the whole room reset or something. No red on red in this game, eh? B3. I think I'm on the wrong side of the road again. I also love that like, there's no... There is a timer... But there's no actual timer, so I can't actually see if I'm going to be late or not. Exit. Open door. Exit. Close door. Now, let's see. Do I have to go change? I think I have to go change again. Got to be in uniform. For a guy in a rush, he walks pretty slowly. <laughs> and I guess I can't just show up to the briefing out of uniform. They'll probably get angry with me. Oh, everyone's still here. I'm not late. Huzzah. Can you believe that, Morris Fudley? I hit all the soap and he's still in there showering. Wonder if his wife goes down to the river to bathe. Open locker. Change clothes. Whatever. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Take gun. Take briefcase. Take ammo. Close locker. Yeah, I, I will assume the chicken is gone from the desk. And his firm voice duly reminds you, being punctual to briefings might keep some of those corrective memos out of your pigeonhole bonds. Now find your seat. Julie's so angry all the time. Sergeant Dooley says, Men, we've received information from a day sergeant concerning a missing persons report filed earlier this morning. It seems that a Mexican male, physical description of 5'8", 145 pounds, black hair, brown eyes, by the name of Jose Martinez, the most generic <laughs> Mexican name in the world, was last seen by his wife two days ago getting into a late model light blue Cadillac. No one has seen or heard from Martinez since. This person has some previous arrests involving narcotic sales, says Dooley, concluding the briefing. Be advised that this black Cadillac may be one and the same as the one involved in the recent murder of Lonnie West. We have a partial plate, license plate number L964. Dooley then proceeds to give everyone the beer, their beat assignments for the day, concluding with your Sonny Bonds. Your call number will be 8332, as it was last time. Ooh, excuse me. Keep it safe out there, boys and girls. Just so I take notes on the back of your hand. Open brief case. Take all. Close brief case. Take notes. Oh, look at that. I can actually, like, that's interesting. 
note one, note two, note three. Okay, there we go. Oh, I think that's just for points purposes. Sunny up for promotion. What? When did that change? Look, hole. Your message box contain, often called the pigeonhole, is empty. Bum, bum, bum. Gotta get my radio. I'm up for promotion. Why? What did I do? Is that a spoiler? It seems like it's a spoiler. Take key. Take radio. Let's go do our walk around. Having performed the prescribed walk around, then we can do our thing. Open door, sit, close door, drive, save the game, five, drive around. What? Oh, I totally looked away. <laughs> Must stare at screen. Okay. I had right of way. I was going straight. Going straight, right of way. Stupid police game. Eighty three thirty two, be advised possible stolen vehicle reported in your vicinity. Vehicle is a light blue late model Cadillac, last seen near Jefferson High, possible drug involvement. Approach with caution, ten four. I think it's that guy. Let's save our game. Six stolen car. Crash. There we go. Noting your persistence in driving skill. <laughs> yes, driving skill. Uh, the driver of the Cadillac pulls over after his attempts to lose you. He didn't try very hard. Fail. Okay. We all stop in front of the same two houses, it looks like. Save. Stolen car. Call for backup. You nervously key your radio. Dispatch, this is 8332. Request backup. Code 3. No. Be advised, 8331 is responding code 3 to your location. Now, apparently, we have to wait until... Officer Jack Cobb arrives on the scene. Cobb radios dispatch. Dispatch, be advised. Hold all radio traffic until code 4 confirmed. 8332, this is 8331. Sunny, I'll cover you from the passenger side of your patrol car while you make contact with the suspect. 8331, out. Open door. Exit. Load gun. What the? 
Yeah, except I'm dead too. Ah, restore. Stolen car. Oh yeah, now we gotta wait for the dude to show up again. Load gun. Alright. Did I say a call for backup? Boom, boom. Load gun. I'm not driving! Let's see if I open the door. I'm not driving! Okay, when he gets here, I'll save the game again. Yep. Yep. Save. Gun. doing it too fast. All right, got my gun. Let's pause it for a sec. Get out with hands up. Lie down. turned red. He got all embarrassed. Okay, okay, I'm lying down. Holster gun. Put gun in holster. Put gun in holster. the handcuffs around his wrists. Stand. Search. Man. You search the suspect and find only pocket change. Plus a loaded Smith & Wesson 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun. The suspect cuts up. Honest officer, I only carry that for self-defense on the freeways. Quiet down, your order him. Hey, Jack. He yelled, your backup. How about booking this evidence? Okay. Read rights. I know my rights, you jackass. To be safe, you read him his rights anyways. Carefully, you admonish your suspect of his Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent, which say can blah, stuff and stings. Yes, we know all those things. Okay. Follow me. You order the suspect into patrol car. He submits with a sarcastic, all right, bleeping. Swear guy. Open door. Close door. Okay, now we can save. Book him. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> okay, now this is one of those weird things. Apparently we put the game to its slowest speed. We go look at gun. He 
you carefully so as not to smudge any possible fingerprints. Read serial number. SW. This is one of those things that you will only ever figure out with a walkthrough. So SW9764912. Put gun down. Now I search the car. First I search the gun, then I search the car. Okay. Look at car. You look at the floorboard, the seats, and even under the seats, you find nothing. Then you remember the glove compartment. Say, the door jam of the suspect's vehicle is black instead of light blue. A closer examination of the door jam reveals the vehicle's VIN plate. A quick rub with your thumb uncovers its number C03456, which is the one from this morning. Look at glove box. Open glove box. Look. You observe a black notebook and two driver two driver's licenses. Very interesting. Take black book. You open the notebook. I'm gonna take well, uh, I could take a screenshot, but I'll just take a picture with my phone because I have technology now because it's not 1988. 87 even, sorry. <laughs> Come on, stupid slow iPhone. Beep. Mm -mm -mm. Return book. You leave the suspect's black book undisturbed to be impounded with the car. Take licenses. Take license. Marvin Hoffman and Leroy Pearson. Your partner will impound these items into evidence along with the car. Close, glove, box. Your partner with that. Done and done. And let's look in the trunk. I think he means trunk. Open trunk. Sure I am. How close do I have to be to the stupid thing? Oh, that looks like some marijuana. You open the trunk and discover a clear plastic bag containing a white powdery substance resembling cocaine and another clear plastic bag containing a green leafy substance resembling marijuana. Or marijuana. Close trunk. We'll book that along with the car. As you start to examine the evidence, you hear Jack's voice behind you. Just leave that stuff in the trunk, Sonny. I'll impound it along with the car. Okay, Jack, see you back at the station. Use radio. Dispatch, be advised. Hold all radio traffic until code 4 confirmed. Try that again. Get in car. Close door. Use radio. Okay, I guess we don't need to report in. Drive. Time to go to jail. Jail. So this guy shot that other dude? Could very well be. Uh, where was the jail? D... Oh, come on! <laughs> 
If anything happens to my car, I'll have my lawyer on you so fast, he'll keep it down back there. Slime ball. Jack comes on the radio. Firmly V331, tow truck en route. Whoa, that was a close call. I really should write down where everything is. Jail, 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 jail. Where is the jail? D3. C2. So I gotta go up one and over one, hopefully. Nope, down one and over one. Yeah, the driving is a bit easier when you're on slow, but not that much easier because everything's slower, even like the keyboard input. and it's <laughs> These parts of Sierra games are very frustrating. They always have been. And also it's going to take forever to go anywhere. D2. D3. There's the jail. I really wish I could make a right on red. Let's save and try. Right on red. Nope. <laughs> oh, there's my green light. Green, green light. Escape. Exit. Open door. Exit. Save. I am now at the jail. It looks like the same process as before. Open door. Get up those stairs, dog meat. That's not very considerate. The world would be a lot better off without cops like you. Shut up and keep moving, Hoffman. Damn it, Hoffman! I guess this is your big bust for the day, huh, pig? Seeing you in cuffs gives me a natural high, punk. I like the little repartee they have here. You're going to find out this was a big waste of your time. And mine. It's hard to tell who's talking. Open locker. Put gun in. Put gun in a locker. Close locker. <laughs> a lot of typing locker. Press button. You push the buzzer, the jailer releases the electronic lock. Follow me, you already get a prisoner. Oh, my other dude's gone. Fat Albert's still there. The jailer greets you with a friendly, if you're selling tickets, I don't need any. My goodness gracious, he stand, here stands Bonds again on behalf of the people. This is one bad dude, says the jailer. What are you booking him for, Sherlock? Drugs. Okay, drugs will do. Fill out the booking slip and give me his property. What's your name, the jailer asks the prisoner. The name's uh, Marvin Hoffman, you scumbag. He responds, and that's all you're getting out of me. Deep down, you know this sleazebag is not the man he claims he is. You book him as Marvin Hoffman anyway, hoping his numerous felony charges will keep him in the slammer long enough for you to ascertain his true identity. You hand the jailer the booking slip and the suspect's property. Okay, Bonds, the jailer says, you can remove his cuffs and place Mr. So-called Marvin Hoffman into cell number one. Remove cuffs. You remove the cuffs and place them in your handcuff case. Your penthouse awaits you, Hoffman. Shove it, pig.
You little meter maids can't keep me in here, he shouts. Hoffman yells, I'll be out of this tank before you finish your coffee break. Jack says, well, I see you got that slime ball pusher booked. The car's tucked away and all the evidence is booked. This is one clean bust, my boy. I received a call from dispatch on the way over here. Dooley wants to see you in his office when you're done here. Hmm. Since my shift is over, I'll see you back at the station. Oh, I think this is good news for Sonny Bonds. Time to head back to the police station. Save game. 10, 10, go to station. Where's my car? What the? Ah. Ah. <laughs> Lucky I saved games. Okay, jail. We'll do this quick. Open door. Close door. Yeah, yeah. Shut up, Hoffman. Don't leave your door open. Car gets stolen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna find out it's a big waste of time. Zubba, zubba, zubba. Open locker. Put gun in the locker. Put gun in the locker. Close locker. button follow me punk drugs we already read all this stuff Remove cuffs. Oh, it looks like Twitch chat died. It's got my good news again. Okay. Okay, now I can go. Let's get my gun. Open locker. Take, take gun. Close locker. Okay, now we get to go back to the police station. Sorry, wrong music. Uh, nah, let's not do that. Uh, fasten seatbelt. Maybe next time I'll, rem I'll remember to take it off. So people that were in the chat, Twitch chat has gone away from me, so sorry, I can't see what you're saying anymore. I don't know if it's Twitch or it's my internet, because, yeah, basically on the uh, phone this morning, I, so I, I decided to switch providers, because uh, sadly, Bell Canada, though the speed is good and all that stuff, and they're nice and they're friendly, uh, just keeps going down, and uh, I can't have that. So, anyways, drive, save, go to station, which is one over from here. Do, 
do 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 nope it's not one over for here i am my sense of direction honestly it's it's unfortunate i have a pilot's license and all these things and i have a very poor sense of direction and i always have and i probably always will my brain just doesn't work that way oh chat came back up huzzah Exit. Open door. Exit. Close door. Never gonna forget that again. Save, save. Let's go to Dooley's office. Walking, walking, walking. Walking the wrong way. What can I do for you, fly boy? Nothing. Open door. Hello, Sonny. I have a memo here concerning you. Let me read it to you. As Sergeant Dooley starts to read, his eyes begin to sting and water profusely. Sergeant Dooley races for the bathroom, cursing the gremlin for spraying the memo with mace. <laughs> <laughs> on his way out Dooley yells read the memo yourself Sonny if you can okay from the hallway comes uncontrolled laughter as Dooley declares when I find who that gremlin is I swear I'll kill him this is like horrible harassment Just in case I die from the mace. Read memo. Interdepartmental memo from Lieutenant Deborah, I mean James Morgan, narcotics. R.E. Officer Bonds. Officer Bonds' request for a temporary transfer to the narcotics department has been approved. Bonds is to report to my office ASAP in suitable street clothes. Okay. Good stuff. I guess I gotta go change into suitable street clothes. Very slowly walking across the big room, blah, blah, blah. Open locker change clothes. Let's go take that shower. I want to smell good for my big promotion. Boy, you sure can't tell there's a full moon out. You should see the nut I arrested last night for being under the influence of drugs. This dude was so wired, he was nude, break dancing on loose gravel. His back looked like raw meat. Turn on shower. Turn off shower. Open door. Locker. Change. Clothes. Clothes. Done and done. Take my gun. 
take ammo, take brief case. Close locker. Oh, I'm badass in my white t-shirt. A song like that? I got a white t-shirt or sign, I don't know, whatever. I'm bad with music. Don't need a patrol car anymore. So let's go put that back. Replace key. And I think we go in here. Let's double check. Let's go talk to Deborah Morgan. Open door. Hello, Sonny. Please step over here to my desk. Boy. Lieutenant Morgan welcomes you to the Narcotics Division and explains the necessity of your new image. Sonny, I've decided to put you on the Hoffman case due to your involvement in the arrest. Your partner will be Detective Laura Watts. Sexy. You can join Laura in her office now. Good luck on the case and welcome aboard, Sonny. And to the narcotics office we go. There's Laura. Welcome to the narcotics division, Sonny, says Laura. I'm pleased you were selected for the position. Allow me to show you around. And this is the filing cabinet. <laughs> this is this file cabinet contains all our active or narcotic cases, including Hoffman's file. Walk this way. This is where car keys come from. This is the keyboard. This keyboard contains key keys to the unmarked cars that are assigned to the narcotics division. I've been meaning to update that clipboard. Hang in there. By the way, our radio call number is 83 Nora 10. Good to know. Don't tell me, this is my desk. Nope, yes, toaster. This will be your desk. Since you have your own desk now, your pigeonhole will be assigned to someone else. Okay. Back to work. <laughs> Sunny, Laura says earnestly. I attended Hoffman's arraignment early this morning. He's being represented by some out of town hotshot lawyer. The jerk has convinced Judge Palmer that Hoffman is who he says he is, and that's not the worst of it. Judge Palmer set Hoffman's bail at only $500,000, Laura exclaims. We've got to show cause to justify a no-bail warrant. If Hoffman gets out on bail, we'll never see his ugly face again. Sonny, I have a meeting right now and can't stay. Oh, Hoffman's your baby. Now and time is running out. I hope you can discover some information that will convince Judge Palmer to hold him without bail. Save. Twelve. Narcotics. Narcissistics. Narcotics. Oh, hope my neck cracking didn't come across the uh, microphone. Uh, take clipboard. Look. Oh. 1983, Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Zaba zaba. Stowed in the litton. Yamama mama. Motorcycle. A yamama mama. Motorcycle. <laughs> Scan through the pages in the arrow keys. Burglary. Burglary. Hog and dog. Sure. Be on the lookout for a dog. FBI most wanted list. Jason Tesselli. Oh, known to use the last names. Harrison Hoffman. Take list. Aha, tattoo a flower above left nipple. 
You take the FBI wanted poster, knowing Judge Palmer will find this very interesting. Replace clipboard. Well, that was easy. Let's grab a key. Take key. Sonny, I just got a call from the jail. Hoffman's attorney is on his way over there with a half million dollars to bail him out. If you found anything at all, we can use to hold this sucker. Now is the time to use it. Take whatever you have and get over to the courthouse and see if you can get a no bail warrant out of Judge Palmer. I assume, I will assume the courthouse is beside the jail, that city hall looking building. Get Hoffman's file first, probably need that. Open file cabinet. Take Hoffman. Take file. Okay, now let's go. Hopefully I'm not too slow again. Still got a safety check. The undercover car, very muy importante. And go around the back of this thing. Nope. That is an ugly ass car, let me tell you. I'll tell you what. Okay. Open door. Sit. Close door. Drive. Save. Thirteen. Courthouse. Oh! <laughs> Every time without fail. Okay. Driving music is happening or something. Oh, that was close. I'm probably going to be late because I keep going the wrong way. Nope. <laughs> there we go. Escape. Exit. Open door. Exit. Close door. Oh, I did forget to take my seatbelt off last time I got out of my car. <laughs> Save. Still got that one. 14, just in case I'm two. Core house. It's the core house. Open door. Okay, let's go see the window. How do you do, sir? May I help you? Talk to judge. I'm sorry, but Judge Kim Palmer's court is presently in session. What?
No bail warrant. Can only interrupt a court in session for an extreme emergency. This is emergency. Please wait a moment. I'll send a message with the bailiff. Oh, it's that easy to say it's an emergency? Oh yeah, this was an emergency. Waiting, waiting. Are you returning, man? Damn it, man! Judge Palmer will see you if you can make it quick. Go into the courtroom. Save. Preemptive typing. In we go. Judge Palmer strikes the gavel. Silence! I will... <laughs> Silence! You are in the presence of the robot elders! No. <laughs> I will consider Mr. Bonds' request. Mr. Bonds, you may approach the bench. Mr. Bonds, who or what is this warrant for? Says the judge. Oh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Marvin... Hoffman. And what information do you have to substantiate the validity, validity, validity of a warrant? The Hoffman file. All right, do you have any other information? FBI list. Judge Palmer motions the bailiff to retrieve said evidence. You hand the evidence to the bailiff. The bailiff is fat and he walks behind the thing. Your heart races as Judge Palmer evaluates your evidence. You think to yourself, this punk cannot go free. Judge Palmer scans the items presented and questions, what makes you think these two men are the same person, Mr. Bonds? Tattoo, right? Yeah. The bailiff and court reporter squirm and choke, trying to conceal their laughter. Well... You quietly tell a judge your tale of tattoos and nipples. The judge attempts to stifle her giggles, but fails. Judge Palmer whispers softly to you, Well, Mr. Bonds, it appears your friend has his tip cut in the ringer. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Stifling her laughter, Judge Palmer says, Congratulations, Mr. Bonds, your request is granted. Success! Here is a no-bail warrant issued in the name of Jason Teselli, alias Marvin Hoffman. Bailiff, deliver this to Mr. Bonds and escort him out. Here you are, Mr. Bonds. I hope you are not too late. Tesselli's attorney is at the jail at this very moment, attempting his release. All right, now I gotta get across the street. Now we got into my really ugly ass car. door, sit, close door, drive, save, 15, go to jail, jail, that is the jail, don't crash, I'm only going a very short distance, exit, open door, exit, close door, <laughs> U N in locker. Close locker. Words stop having meaning. Press button. In we go. 
Hey, Sonny, come over here, says the jailer. I have something to tell you. Okay. I hope you know, Bonds, at this very moment, Hoffman's lawyer is in the front reception area bailing that worm out. I probably have to give him... Give warrant hunt to jailer. You hand the jailer the no-bail warrant just in time to keep Mr. Teselli from returning to the streets. Oh man, this is great, Sonny, the jailer laughs. I hope you know this will slam the old boy's orifice shut. I'll be right back. This is going to blow his attorney's mind. I like how you actually have to wait. Like, it's realistic. He's going to the front. He's doing some stuff. He's talking. They're arguing. Zava zava. And now he's back. Boy, that made my day, Sonny. You should have seen the guy. He started ranting and raving like a little kid who just had his lollipop taken away. Okay. Let's get out of here. Rottendale, maggot. Open locker. Take gun. Take gun. Close locker. And now we will return to the police station because that seems like a logical thing to do. Open door. Sit. Close door. Drive. Save. 16. 16. Go to station. I think it's just straight up. Straight up. Exit. It looks like Laura is waiting for you. You wonder what's up. I think I gotta get out of the car. Okay, Laura's getting in the car. Sonny, one of my informants just told me that a drug deal is going down soon in Lytton City Park, says Laura. Getting into your car. Lieutenant Morgan. Oh, sorry, he's twitching. <sighs> Lieutenant Morgan wants us to stake it out and see what we can do. Okay, let's drive. Well, cowboy, let's roll. Okay, so hopefully I won't kill both of us. 17. Go to park, which is on C3, is it? No, oh, B1. Let's see, down is D, so I gotta go up. No, down is, yes. <laughs> Directions, bad at them. B3. Driving. Hopefully this will be B2. Yes, and B1's on the next block. Oh, I gotta go in there? I'm so gonna die. Okay. Let's get close and then I'll save. So gonna die going in there. Okay, let's do this. Save. Okay. Exit. This is not a good place to exit your vehicle. How about here? 
There we go. Open door. Exit car. Close door. Save game. Okay. Is Laura coming? Or do I have to do everything? Make the new guy do it. What's the matter? Let's get this show on the road. Okay, here I am at the park. Let's go hide. Load our gun. You rip out the speed loader and load your weapon. You conceal yourself in the bushes, but with a clear view of the table. your transmission. 10-4 will maintain radio silence until I hear from you. Okay. Nope. You quietly watch a man enter the picnic area. Cautiously nears the picnic table. Very mysterious. Another guy? What's going on? The steel's going south. The steel's going south. Oh, there we go. Oh, that guy's shady looking. Another figure carefully approaches the picnic table. Could it be his drug contact? Psst, Vic, were you followed? No way, man, it's cool. I got the stuff. Did you bring the cash? Yeah, right here. One suspect hands what appears to be an envelope to the other suspect. The second suspect returns a small plastic bag containing a white substance. Saving game. Looks like the deal is done. Hey, butt breath, this ain't enough. Where's the rest? As they argue, we realize the pusher is dissatisfied with the contents of the envelope. You quietly radio Laura. I'm moving in. You hook up. Anybody trying to take foot bail? Halt, police. Halt, you shout, police officer. Jiggers, the fuzz, shouts the pusher. I'm out of here. <laughs> Don't shoot, officer, shouts the young man. I give up. Holster gun. 
shotgun in holster. Cuff man him. You cuff the trembling suspect. Read rights. Yeah, yeah. Miranda writes. Search man. The search reveals nothing except his school identification card and a small bag containing a white powdery substance that you watched him get from the pusher. Look at ID. The Jefferson High School student identification card in the name of Victor Sims matches the general description of your subject. Look, drugs. The contents of the bag appear to be cocaine. Christian man. Sims is reluctant but cooperative. You learn he has been selling to kids at Jefferson High School, including Officer Cobb's daughter, Kathy. See that again. I used to buy from a guy named Generic Mexican Man. But then Martinez introduced me to that guy, Colby, Sims says. I haven't seen Martinez since. Okay. Aha, Colby. Follow Sims to the patrol car. What took you so long, Hot Rod? I picked up this loose end trying to take foot bail on you. Yeah, sure, Laura. You probably just grabbed the first white male you could find. And I think we put him in the car. Let's see here. Question Colby. Colby refuses to answer any questions. After persistent questioning of Colby, you discover he buys his drugs from Leroy Pearson. He says Leroy's telephone number is 555. Oh, that's a fake phone number. 6537. He also asks that his cooperation be noted for consideration by the court. Open door, close door. Lieutenant Morgan will be real happy with this bust. Open door, close door, <laughs> whoops, open door, <laughs> sit, close door, close door, drive. Oh, we got a full, full house, save. So I think I gotta go to jail. Yes, we gotta go to the jail. 20. Jail. Man, I'm booking a lot of guys. I'm like a booking machine. It's D2 or something like that. Maybe it's D3. C3. C3 is the police station. So D3 is the jail. I'm getting better at this. Where am I? Where's on my car? There we are. There's the police station, which means I could have turned there for the jail. I almost ran that light because <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Traffic lights, traffic lights. 
Waiting for the traffic lights. Now I guess we do the same procedure. Exit. Open door. Exit. Close door. See, I, I'm, I'm making this a ritual. Open door. Close door. Let's go, maggots. Get the door, Sonny. I'll keep an eye on these boys. Open locker, put, put gun in locker, close locker, yay for repetitiveness. Closer locker. Yeah, I know. There we go. That way no one can get my gun. Doors are closed, save game. Jail. Grass bouton. Slam dunk Donnie yells through the fence. Hey, baby, you boys play basketball? Uh, everyone's got, like, a stereotypical nickname. Sonny, I'll wait here while you complete the booking. You don't do anything! The jailer greets you with a friendly, oh no, here comes more paperwork. The jailer says, this is certainly a fine looking group you got this time, Sonny. Book them. What are you charging these dudes with? Drugs. Okay, drugs it will be, the jailer says. Fill out a booking slip and give me his property. You remove inventory and deliver the prisoner's personal property to the jailer along with... The booking slip. Okay, Sonny, remove their cuffs and put the little pushers into cell number one. Remove cuffs. You remove the cuffs and place them in your handcuff case. I'm going to sue you for making them cuffs so tight. Flat foot threatens your prisoner. I think you boys know where to go, you tell them. Up yours, Dick Tracy. You'll never make this stick. Hey, Bonds, yells Laura. I'll wait for you in the car. Okay, let's get... Go back to the police station. Open locker. Take gun. Take gun. Close locker. Open door. Sit. Looks like you'll be a valued addition to narcotic bonds. Narcotics bonds. Store. Drive. Let's get back to the station. 21. Station. Don't change on me, lights. Exit. Sonny, I'll go right up this arrest. I'll bet Jack is over at the Blue Room. Why don't you go tell him we nailed the rat who was dealing dope at Jefferson High?
Okay, drive, save. That was 22, blue room. Where's the blue room again? B4. So B is up here. And four is gonna be that away. Of course, this is a horrible way to get there because I'm stuck going around the highway entrance. that part of the trip. Changing lights? Any time now. Any time now. Oop, there we go. Er. Exit. Open door. Exit. Close door. Save, blue room. You enter the blue room and see Jack seated at a table. He appears to be quite intoxicated. Doesn't Jack work? I thought he was a cop too. Maybe Jack's going to feel bad now because I did something he couldn't do. Hello, talk to Jack. Trying to cheer Jack, you tell him about the Victor Sims arrest and how he was responsible for selling dope at the high school. Sonny, I really do appreciate you nailing that filthy scumbag pusher, but I'm afraid it might be too late. How's that? Hey Brian, I'm using a guide. There is no way I can remember all this stuff. This is a much longer game than I remember. Anyways, my daughter Kathy is in the intensive care ward over at Linton General Hospital. He explains she's in a coma from a drug OD. There's nothing I can do. Wow, things just do not go well. Oh, Sonny, there's nothing anyone can do. Is he done? Okay, he's... Nope. <laughs> the bartender says, for your information, Sonny, I have a cab on the way for Jack. That's good to know. I sure would love to stretch that neck of, or stretch the neck of that sorry dope pushing scum sucker that hurt my little girl. More? Yes? No? Still talking? Can I get up? Oh, here comes some dude. The cab driver shouts out, "Hey, who called for the taxi?" That's it for me, Sonny. I'll see you later. Okay. The cabbie says, right this way, buddy boy, and don't fall down. Woo, man, this boy is in bad shape. I don't know, he's walking a pretty straight line to me. That's what he looks like. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Sonny, says Keith, but I have some bad news for you. What? Lieutenant Morgan sent me over here to advise you that your boy, Teselli, has escaped from jail. Darn it. Teselli jumped a guard, then made it to the exercise yard where he escaped by climbing over the fence. What a useless jail! There's a citywide dragnet out on him right now. Morgan wants to see you back in his office ASAP. Okay. See you later, Sonny. I have business to take care of. Okay, back to the police station it is.
and deliver. Open door, sit, close door, drive, save, 23, PB station. I didn't know if I was the, the white car on top or the white car on the bottom. Changing light, changing light. Need to change the changing light. Green light. I can't remember. I think in Police Quest 2, they made this a little bit less... Time sucky. Exit. Open door. Exit. Close door. Let's go see Lieutenant Morgan. Good to see you, Sonny. Come over to my desk. Come over here, boy. I know you worked hard trying to keep that punk Hoffman in jail. What a shame that it was all for naught. It's frustrating when a man does his best job he can do and some dummy screws it up. I wouldn't trust that tower guard to guard our water fountain. Okay. After reviewing the Hoffman file, I think we should take a close look at the black book that was impounded along with his Cadillac. Get it from Russ in the evidence lockup. You okay. Check it out. They can get back to me. I have some other idea leads to investigate. When we next meet, I may have some new ideas. So, okay. Let's go see the whatever, whatever. Black book. Black book. Now, Sonny, you know this is official evidence. Don't go running off with it. Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Okay, I took a picture of that anyways. So I'm looking at it. Return book. Good nook. Okay. Actually, let me. Let's see if there's pages. Oh, there are pages. Yeah. Yeah. Discipline pimp one. I like that. Yeah, uh huh? Initiate plan three. I like that. Terminate LW, terminate JM. Whoa. Okay. Return book. Gun. Now signing in. Uh, SW976-4912. The one I already found. Return gun. Computer box. Enter the search string.
S W nine seven six. Oops, you were. There we go. S W nine seven six. My numeric keypad wasn't working right. Four nine one two. Forty five caliber automatic handgun reported stolen. Chicago contact Detective Tabor at one three. Hey, where'd my pen go? Three one two. Five five five. Three, three, eight, two. And let's turn off computer. Because God knows if I don't turn off the computer, I might just lose the game because it's a Sierra game. <laughs> Go sit at my desk and use my phone. Use phone. One. Three, one, two. One, two. Five, five, five. Three, three, eight, two. Okay, five on the numeric keypad doesn't work. Telephone. Telephone. So I'm going to answer. Chicago PD, Detective Tabor speaking. How may I help you? Information on Tesselli. What's a Tesselli? Oh, yes, we know your man. Jason Tesselli, alias Hoffman, alias Pearson. He is linked to that big time card shark and drug runner named Jesse Baines. Both have dropped from sight in our area. I'll send you a mugshot of this guy, Baines. Good luck. Click. Okay. 25. Baines. Evans. Close enough. Use phone. And let's call 555 Is that it? No. 555 five, five. Oops. That's not a number. Crime Lab Detective Williams, who's speaking, please? Sonny Bonds. Hello, Sonny, what can I do for you? Tesselli. Yes, the prints on the gun match that Hoffman Tesselli fellow. Now oh, I heard he escaped. Bye now, click. Okay, let's get out of here. Yeah, I don't know where that phone number came from. It was in the walkthrough. I'm too lazy to figure it out. <laughs> Laura's here. Let's see if she has something to say. Sunny, just after you left, a hooker by the name of Sweet Cheeks Marie, who called you Precious, called from the jail and said she needs to see you as soon as possible. <coughs> but before you go to the jail, Morgan wants to see you. Okay, let's see Morgan. He probably has some new information. It's good to see you, Sonny. Come over to my desk, as always. Hello, Sonny. I hear your little sweetheart is in the can. Sonny, I think your friend Sweet Cheeks may be able to help us out. Yep, yeah, it's quite possible. It seems our drug problem is eliminating, emanating, emanating from the Hotel Del Foria. In lieu of her current state of affairs, I bet Sweet Cheeks would be willing to help you establish her cover at the hotel. Your cover at the hotel. Go over to the jail and see if she'll help you with the hotel operation. When you get back, I'll hold a briefing on the operation. I'll call the jail and arrange everything for you. Okay. 26... See sweet cheeks at jail. Okay, so um, been doing this for quite a while now. I don't even know if I'm not even near halfway through the game. Uh, so I'm going to stop there. 
for the moment. Uh, I may pick it up in another stream, or I may just roll on to, uh, to Police Quest 2. I think I and you guys have had a pretty good idea of things, and there's, you know, I'm not... These are never these were never planned to be long plays or you know let's plays and full playthroughs or anything like that. It's really just for me research to you know get an idea of the game, remember the game. I don't ever think I even got this far when I originally played uh, Police Quest One. So really cool, actually a lot more fun than I remember. Uh, aside from the uh, very irritating driving parts, but that said, uh, tons of fun. So uh, I will see you guys later. Like I said, the next one may be a continuation of PQ1, but probably will be uh, will be PQ2. So that's that. Thank you, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Battle control terminated. <laughs>